Throughout history, there are a seemingly endless series of supposedly cursed items that have caused unwitting mortals trouble due to them being possessed by ghosts and demons of a malevolent nature. There have been cursed dolls, chairs, and even books, but today we will be focusing on paintings. These haunted paintings keep showing up in the hands of people who are unwilling or unqualified to handle the dark powers emanating from them. And for the protection of all involved, the art should really be put in the charge of people who have experience dealing with paranormal forces, such as the people in charge of the Warren Occult Museum. Hello. I'm Andrew Boyd, and though my appreciation for art has become a lot less picky since I became trapped in this dark dimension that is as vast as space and as timeless as infinity, I have managed to curate, for your enjoyment, a gallery of the top five demonic paintings that should be in the Warren Occult Museum. Let us begin our journey. Number five, the Manson Blood Painting. Charles Manson was the infamous cult leader who formed a group of mostly young women teaching them that they were the reincarnations of the original Christians and that he was Jesus Christ. Manson began using his followers for extortion, taking a music teacher who they believed had inherited a large fortune hostage in his home and demanding that he join the cult and turn over the money. The man maintained that they were mistaken and Manson attacked him with a sword before having one of his followers finish the job. In the cult's most famous incident, Manson sent four family members to the home of Hollywood actor actress Sharon Tate with instructions for them to end the lives of Tate and the four guests who were staying with her. The next night, these family members were joined by three others and brought by Manson to the home of Leno and Rosemary LaBianca, where they broke in and tied up the two residents at Manson's instructions. He then ordered them to dispatch the victims and left. Although it hasn't been conclusively proven, the Manson family are believed to be responsible for at least 15 other deaths, with Manson himself claiming at one point that he was responsible for 35 total deaths. Manson was apprehended and remained in prison until his execution in 2017. Even while in custody, he maintained a dedicated group of admirers, and after his death, his ashes were scattered at his funeral and an admiring artist gathered some of them up. The artist, Ryan Almighty, then used their own blood in order to paint a picture of the cult leader using Manson's real ashes to fill in the eyes on the portrait. Many people who see the painting report it having a charged feeling, and many people refuse to look into the eyes of the Manson painting out of fear for what could happen. It doesn't have too much of a reputation for being haunted, but come on. If ever there was a painting that was begging to be haunted or cursed, it would be the one made with the actual human remains of Charles Manson. This painting should be destroyed or locked away in the Warrens Museum just to be safe. Why wait until more creepy activity is linked to this disturbing painting? Number 4. The Hanging Man this haunted painting is actually linked to a haunted photograph, making it twice as haunted as some of the art on this list. It all started when a photographer named James Kidd took a seemingly innocuous photo of a wooden cart next to a barn. Kidd thought nothing of it until he had the photo developed and saw a ghostly figure had made its way into the frame. On the left side of the cart, he could see a headless and hanging man. He showed the photo to others who searched for any sign of doctoring, but could find none. It was then that this painting caught the attention of a painter named Laura P. Laura claims that she felt drawn to the image and decided that she had to make an oil painting based on the photograph. While painting the picture, she reported feeling deeply uneasy, but she pushed through to finish her art. The painting was hung at a local business, but was soon taken down after it reportedly began moving on its own and caused several important papers to go missing. Laura then put the painting up in her own home. She soon began to experience strange occurrences. These included objects being knocked over or broken, mysterious knocking on the doors, strange leaks, and perhaps most disturbing, the apparition of the headless man in her home. Once word of the haunted painting got out, she received several offers from collectors to buy the painting. She has so far refused, claiming that she is afraid of what the painting could do in the homes of others. 
If this is truly the only thing preventing her from getting rid of this painting, which is apparently causing her to see headless ghosts, perhaps the right move is to give the painting to the Warren Museum, who if nothing else would know what they are signing up for and could take it off of her hands. Number 3. The John Wayne Gacy Clown Paintings John Wayne Gacy was the notorious serial murderer operating out of Chicago from the late 60s until the late 70s. He would lure victims into his home with the promise of illicit substances. He would then trick the young men into putting on a pair of handcuffs, claiming that he was going to demonstrate a magic trick. He would then force himself on them, hurt them for his own amusement, and then finally asphyxiate them before hiding their remains in his crawl space. In the 11 years that he operated, he was responsible for the deaths of over 33 people before he was arrested on December 21st, 1978 and sentenced to execution by lethal injection. Gacy had appeared for years to be the perfect family man, being an active member of his community and in a detail that the media became obsessed with, volunteering as a clown who would perform at parades, fundraisers, and children's hospitals. This was unrelated to his crimes, it was such an odd detail that the press dubbed him the Killer Clown. This apparently served as the inspiration for Stephen King's It, and since then, clowns just haven't been able to catch a break. While awaiting his fate on death row, Gacy took up painting, creating several portraits of himself dressed as Pogo the Clown. He is believed to have created over 2,000 paintings in prison before his death in 1994. After this, his attorney auctioned the paintings off, with several of them being purchased and burned in a bonfire attended by the families of his victims. Of course, this just made the paintings that remained more valuable and rare, and they have been known to show up in auctions where they are purchased for tens of thousands of dollars by people with questionable morals and taste. Some of these collectors came to regret their purchase of the Gacy clown paintings, with some claiming to experience vivid nightmares and visions of Gacy's crimes and victims sitting at the foot of their beds after having looked at the paintings for too long. If such claims are genuine, then perhaps it would be better to take these disturbing paintings and have them locked in the deepest, darkest corner of the Warrens Museum, to prevent them from doing any harm to the people who come across them. Number 2. The Anguished Man the tale of this rather disturbing looking painting is strange and steeped in mystery. Every scant piece of information we have on it is more unsettling than the last. The painting of a featureless man who seems to be screaming was apparently painted by a deeply troubled artist who mixed his own blood with the paints in an effort to get the right shade of red. Not long after completing it, the artist took his own life, and the painting found its way into a woman's care. She kept it for many years, but claimed that once she put the painting up, her and her family began to see a dark, shadowy figure roaming about the house. At night, they would hear strange sounds like footsteps and crying. The woman took the painting down and kept it locked in her attic for 25 years until she died, leaving the painting to its current caretaker, Sean Robinson. Sean had been warned by his grandmother that the painting was haunted, but he thought little of it. Robinson kept the painting in his basement for about a decade before rediscovering it and putting it up. Once again, the family began seeing the dark, shadowy figure roaming the halls and hearing the sounds of weeping and moaning during the night. Sean began leaving a camera on by the painting to try and get evidence of its paranormal nature, and upon reviewing the footage, heard some odd noises and saw evidence of doors opening and closing, seemingly by themselves, and the painting falling over onto the ground. As time went on, the activity became more and more intense, with his wife seeing a strange mist and an unseen force pushing his son down the stairs. Things went from bad to worse when guests who came to see the painting began reporting intense and sudden nosebleeds. Sean takes the painting out from time to time to show it to paranormal investigators and television programs who want to hear his story, but otherwise, the anguished man is apparently kept locked away in a safe location to prevent any further harm from coming to unwitting people. As much as this might be the right move, someone like Sean, with very limited knowledge of the paranormal, might not be the right person to take care of such a dangerous piece of 
art, and it might be safer for him and everyone else if it were handed over to people with more experience dealing with cursed and dangerous artifacts, such as the people who run the Warren's Occult Museum. Who knows, perhaps the painting would prefer it, and would start up a friendly relationship with the Annabelle doll, and the two would become less evil as they have each finally found a true bosom buddy. Or maybe it would just make things worse. The point is, we will never know for sure unless we try. Number 1. The Hands Resist Him This painting featuring a sad looking young boy and a creepy doll like girl standing in front of a window, separating them from a series of hands emerging from the darkness, was created by an artist named Bill Stoneham in 1972. It was hung in a gallery. Both the owner of the gallery and the first critic to ever review the painting both died suddenly within a year of looking at the painting. The artist then took possession of the painting, but claimed that the two children in the painting would sometimes move, leaving the frame and on one occasion coming out of the painting itself into the real world. The artist put the painting on eBay, telling its stories, and many people who simply looked at the listing claimed to experience odd happenings, such as hearing voices or chills, or becoming ill. The painting sold for a little over a thousand dollars, but if it is really so powerful, perhaps it should be taken to the occult museum, where the harm it can do can be limited as much as possible. With that, our artistic journey through the paranormal has come to a close. The evil curators of this dark dimension have asked that I remind you to like, comment, and subscribe, lest they be forced to transport you into a still life where you will be frozen forever as disinterested critics look you over. I'm off to try and find a means of escape from this dimension, but should I fail, perhaps we will meet again soon, and I can regale you with more tales of the macabre and the disturbing here on Top 5 Scary Videos. Here on Top 5 Scary Videos.